Jin Jin, come on, let's go. You're, you're going to have to go out because the girls and I have got something to do. And Miss Tinkerbell, you go play with Dad. Follow the light. Follow the light. You go that way. You go play with Dad. That way. Oh, goodness. Heavens. There we are. Hang on, where are you? There you are. There you are. Good morning. Are you all still tucked up in bed? Are you with a cuppa? Well, I should be slaving away, do, doing the blow dry, which does take half the time now. Good morning, everybody. I need glasses. Hello, Louise. Good morning. Good morning, Marie. Oh, good, good evening, Donna. How are things in the UK? Good. I managed to catch, how'd I go? Two of Natasha's shows this last week. Oh, I've been a bit slack. Because the, 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 the time difference is double at the moment. So most of the year she's on at 7pm for us, but it's 9 at the moment. I'm a little bit pear-shaped by that stage. Good morning, Pam. Good morning, Sally, Christine, Ruth, Judy, Sue. I feel like I owe Sue something. No. I hope this when I do this and I think... Have I forgotten something? Good morning, Judith. How are things in Yarram this morning? Hello, Joan, Chris, Kate, tucked up in bed, but at night looking forward to life. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Um, Joe, Joy and Sally. Marie, Marie Evans, it is morning. She's into the Baileys already. We're going to have to talk about you later when you're not listening. Ooh, which reminds me, I pulled out the iconic liqueur souffle recipe the other day to share on um, uh, Coulter's Life. I had forgotten about a very potent recipe that requires, requires sharing. Uh, we did the raspberry souffle, but we need to do this one. Yeah, way to go, Sir. I absolutely agree. Kate, Chris, Elizabeth, everyone's here. I'm going to head straight in this morning because it is morning. It's a big day. Oh, my stomach's rumbling. I've done one coffee. Hang on, I'm just I'm just gonna order another one. Hang on. Hey Robbie. Yeah. Seeing you're right near the coffee machine. Yeah. Can I have another one? Please. <laughs> so I, you know, if I have to be out of bed at night, so does Rob. So I dragged him out of bed and sit him in front of his prized possession, his thermo mix, and I've got him making strawberry jam. And this, you know what it's like. The smell is amazing. And then we're moving on to, hello, Diana. Lovely to see you. Um, then we're heading on to zucchini relish. I've got, because I've got zucchinis, it's zucchini time. And I've found the recipe I want, which is the simplest one. And we're going to do all of that before it gets whew, too hot. It is a real summer now, isn't it? I thought they said it was not going to be one. Or was it not going to be a dry one? I don't remember. All right. We're going straight in. Oh, my goodness. You are all up this morning. Look at you all online. Okay. Here is this morning's breakfast buffet. Now, as you know, yesterday I was very confused managed to confuse myself, probably confused you even more. I have two two special requests I'm going to cover off as well this morning. Um, so we're going to go through and do those. I'm not going to name names, well, except for Therese. <laughs> oh, I uh, had a couple of questions come through. Actually, I had a lot, a lot of things come through um, on email, which was lovely, that I read through uh, last night. Special requests for walking foot installation and also a revisit on oiling machines but what came through about half an hour onto my emails which is what I asked for a lot of people just wanted to make the general comment they did not know much about their machine and I have so put out a buffet for you this morning of um, feet and as I said to you I confessed I never had my 
excuse me. Fluff ball. Enough. Go and catch a mouse. Um, so I didn't know much about my machine. So I sort of took a break, waited for it to cool down a bit. And about four o'clock yesterday, I just sat and went, went through the process of starting to make something. And gee, it makes such a difference. Hang on. Rob, can you come and get this cat, please, and stick her outside? It's like Christmas, Santa, bells, Rudolph, all the reindeers. We can't take her bell off her because you really don't want to get on camera dressed like that, Chandler. Oh, is this the, this is the cook test? Yes. Come on, scoop. So, Rob has <laughs> stuck the jam <laughs> on an ice block. Well, yep. This is a plate cold. Come on. That's stuck. Thanks. That's it. It's also stuck to the ice block. Um, people said, just don't know enough about their machines. And, it, it is, and I agree, because I didn't do it, as I said, either. And so it's really, really important to apply yourself, but not, not in big things. I think it's really good if we just start with little things. I'm not going to say, let's go make a whole quilt and use 50 different feet. You need to get to know your machine by applying yourself, you know, and I can do a hundred videos like yesterday in one ear and out the other, or you, you know, you go back and watch them a lot. So I am just going to start for you this morning, a little thing. And in this little thing, I've packed a heap of bits and bobs. So back to the buffet. This is our breakfast buffet with Bailey's Marie. If so, if you so wish. Um, I've lost my live chat. I've lost my live chat. I need to know what you're all saying about me. Hang on. There we go. Right. This is our little buffet. Oh, it's all going to fall off. I did try. Right. Down this end, this is my bits of fabric we're going to work on. Down this end, straight up, and number one, we must never forget this is the foot that comes on your machine. It's called number one for a reason and it's on your machine for a reason, it is your most useful multiple foot. So we must never forget about a number one. Sometimes we go looking for a specialist foot when in fact the one will do it. I've got my 1D out before the, the 790. So I'm actually going to work on a 9 mil machine today. Please do not disown me. I will talk about your 5.5 machines as we go. Only because I want to show one little cool feature on the machine. I actually had texted Anne-Marie last night going, I've just found another file of stitches I didn't know was there. So she was a bit cross because she was working on her applique sampler and I distracted her. Um, eight is your jeans foot. This I've also pulled out to talk about and uh, can't find my eight for my 720, but it's here somewhere. I cleaned up my feet yesterday and my bobbins. Um, I've got out my 20s, so 20 for your 5.5, and I've got my 20D out. I've also got my 23 out. I'm going to use it on my 9mm machine, and I will show you the best way to do that. Not all, not every version of every foot at Benina comes set up for a 9mm machine. If it doesn't, it means you don't need it. You can run with a normal foot. This, I just have to show off. This is the 40C. This only comes with a 790, but for those that have got one, you need to see it in action, or you just need to see it because it's fun. Now, I've got my zipper feet out. These are actually out ready. I'm going to finish off uh, this little purse at the start of our Tuesday live show when M's here. So I've got these out ready, but again, just want to show you the 4D for your 9mm machines, and your 4 for your 5.5. So that's your 440, 475, um, the original version of a 570, it's your 720, that's it. So they're both there. So I'll set these aside because that's going to be Tuesday. See that very serious pointy finger? Tuesday. Walking foot, I'm going to install this and just talk about this just briefly versus a dual feed. Oh, I've got my 97 out versus a 37. Where's my 37? I had it out. I must have been using it. Just a tick. I'll see if it's in here. 
37. 37. Here it is. Okay, so that's the 37 and that's the 97. Both of these do not have a guard, a, a guide on the side. You can get your 50 as well, a 57D or a 57. Um, I don't have mine. Again, I think M might have mine at the moment for um, her 720 and I haven't bothered with one. We'll, we'll talk about that when we pop that on. Okay, so there's all of this. Then, what's well, another serious thing, wasn't it? Then we've also got um, straight stitch plates. So this is the one for, that you would have for a 5.5mm machine and see it's only got the little hole, just a little hole there. So that means your needle can only be doing straight stitch. This is what you need if you're doing machine embroidery and it will definitely enhance your free motion quilting with darning feet, etc. So I'll leave that aside. This is the same one for my uh, larger feed dog machines. And this is a 5.5 mil wide plate for a 9 mil machine. This is, comes into play when we start using um, some of the narrower feet like the 23. So I'm going to take all of these over to the machine and um, we'll have a, have a little bit of a play. Sunday is like holiday, so Bailey's is okay. Okay, I'm, I'm to I don't disagree with you. I'm just totally impressed, Marie. Uh, good morning, Karen. Good morning, Cheryl. Good to see you. Hello, Deb. Now, I've, let's do this special request. Is Therese in the building yet? She may be out watering her beautiful garden um, if I've missed her being online. But, um, first of all, Dini asked me about her walking foot. And she, um, heavens, that one. I've got to move that switcher. It gets in the way when we're doing this stuff. Good morning, Anne. A uh, little bit of Brisbane happening down here today. Nice, hot, humid. So I'm getting everything done early in the morning. And uh, then it's hand stitching this afternoon. Maybe maybe with a little G&T. Oh, I'll uh, hold that thought just for now. And um, come back to it later. Now, Dini was worried about her foot. She couldn't get her foot on her 790. And then she thought she had the wrong one. So I'm just going to pop it on. I'm sure she's got the right one. Um, the main... These are a little bit of a trick to get on. Hello, Elizabeth. Good to see you. Hi, Jane. Um, a, a little bit of an effort to put on. And the trick is you need to get this um, up onto your the cross, if you want to call it the cross beam, or your little needle shaft that comes across here. This is the, screw, uh, the one that you're, you undo to get your needle out, the little screw in here. And that screw pushes in and holds the top of your needle in place. Right, so... This arm has to go up on that, and that is super important because then you get this, see the, the my little Teflon feed dogs on the top are going up and down? That creates the mechanism for creating feed dogs top and bottom. So it's grabbing, letting go, grabbing, letting go, and pulling the fabric evenly, all three layers of your quilting, or whatever you're doing through the machine. So you've got to get that little arm up onto the needle shaft first and then you're going to have a shank hole that Lisa can't see, there you go, that it's just the same, it's exactly the same hole as what's in all of your other feet so it's exactly the same as all the others all right it doesn't have a sense of this foot this one goes on all machines that are back about 20-25 years um, are the same and then you pull your little lever down like that and you're on there is no dual feed engage with a walking foot because this is pretty much doing the same oh no it's not the same thing is it, it it's you've got your feet all happening it's feed dogs all happening under here and then you're putting extra feed dogs on the top so it's not the same as a dual feed but you don't engage the dual feed either okay that's how it goes on. Now, one of the problems, or one of the things that... Good morning, Gidget. Um, thanks, Robbie. Oh, clock, clock, clock. Whoosh. <laughs> one, two, 
fine coffee. Um, one of the um, one of the, the the concerns that didn't have was that this was uh, black in her box and mine is silver. They've just changed along the way. Uh, mine will be a much older one, so it's silver, and some of them have come through as black. The other thing that's changed a little bit is this little this little bitty bob here, this little straight bit across the top here. Um, I believe there's been a change in design and some have come through. It actually looks more like little teeth at the top rather than a straight bar. It's two little prods. But it does the same thing. Absolutely the same thing. So it just goes on there. I'm going to get in your way for a minute because it's easier for me to see from here. Pull you, put your little lever on and it's on. So if you are having trouble with that, please do go also to the... Um, the YouTube, the Benina YouTube on putting on your number um, 40, 50, sorry, your number 50. There is really good ones. And remember in your accessory book, you've all got your little QR code. You can hold your phone over with the camera on and it will link you directly to YouTube. So, oh, where do we start? Let me get all these feet. And we'll bring, I'll just bring the whole board over and just... Uh, very ungraciously, oh no, I, I will need the ironing board, but I'll just sit it there. So the first thing that I want to do is just some simple piecing. I just want to piece, that's all I want to do. And I'm a bit, little bit of a pocket rocket, so if you, um, if you are a speed sewer, if you are on a 5.5, um, for want of a better word, I'm going to say 720. I'm not going to say 735, which was the new one I showed you yesterday, because there are very, very few of those out there yet. So instead of that, I'm going to just say a 720, and you know that I'm talking about all your 5.5 mil machines from a 440, pretty much a 440 up. A 325 as well, all, all of that. So um, if you are going to... So at high speed, so machine embroidery, quilting, um, yeah, free motion, thread work, all of that, you might like to consider switching on a, on a, even on a 720 over to a straight plate like I showed you. It becomes a little bit more important to consider it if you are on a 9mm machine because you've got this beautiful big slit in your plate that is for creating lots and lots of magnificent decorative stitches through, if I hold it to the black, there you go, through here. But you think if you're just going straight at high speed in the centre, then there's that chance that every time the needle goes in it might just push the fabric down. You're going to get a much more optimal tension at high speed if you switch to a straight plate. Some of the models do come with a straight plate and if not uh, you can get one. So I'm going to pop on my straight plate because the first thing I'm going to do is a quarter inch seam and I'm going to do that with my 97D. They have just eliminated, um, got rid of, heavens I've just realised you can see my face up close I'm going to sit back because you've got minimal makeup this morning from me. Um, they have just kind of brushed to the side the number 97 and now the machines all come with a 97D and quite rightly so. The 97 would not perform well, I'm going to say that, without the straight stitch plate. Um, it really, really had to be that all the time. But this at slow and high speed is awesome. So I'm going to pop on my 97D. As I said, you can get a 57 that comes with the hinge guide on the side. I don't find I need it, but if you do decide you would like one, they are really, really good because they are hinged. They're not fixed on the side like a lot of the other brands have. And a lot, a lot of people get the Janome ones and they just end up ripping that side guard off anyway. The Benina ones are hinged so you can go up and over seams and up and over pins um, without a problem. So I've popped on uh, my 97D. I'm going to grab my stylist. You can't see it, but I've got it magnetised to the side of my machine. Oh, the other thing, I was talking with Tim last night, our serviceman, and the other thing as we talked about was you can magnetise your spend needle, or if you've got one and you change it in a hurry and you've got nowhere safe to do it, 
you can it's magnetic so it will it's metal so you can stick that to the side of your machine as well or have a spare there um, I've got my good I've got my spare one that came back with my 720 yesterday because he always changes the needle over so I've got that in I'm going to tell the machine that I've got my number 97 D on Oh look, and you can't see that, can you? Turn it. Now you can see. You can just see there. I don't know if I can zoom in a bit for you. There you go. So up here, um, because of I'm on straight stitch, both the 1C and the 97D have both got stars. So we know it's a good one for just straight stitch. So there we go. Now that I've done that, I'm also going to come down and tell the machine that I have put on my straight stitch plate. And remember, that's so important because then the machine won't let you deviate or forget um, and go off and do a straight, do a zigzag and break your needle. So I'm going to posh that there. They're all color coded. Do so you see that? So that one's orangey red, and then this purple one. That's my purple one there. Punch work, <laughs> cut work, toys for later. So. On the 720s, you can tell it which stitch plate you've got on. You don't tell it which foot you've got on, though, because you don't have sense of feet and a dual feed. That's the only reason. So you won't need that step, but please do go in and tell it you've got your straight stitch plate on. Now, if I try to zigzag, I can turn the knobs on my machine. Um, I can try everything. I can try moving my needle. I can do everything. It won't let me because... I've got my straight stitch plate on and so that is really really good to protect your machine if you um, if you ever do hit your plate with your needle you can get an awful fright because it doesn't just go bang like the old ones do it's like SBX brakes in your car it's going to hammer and there is a little section in your manual about that it hammers and that just is it touching, letting go, touching, letting go to protect all the mechanisms, the needle shaft and the motors in the machine. So when it happens, don't go, don't freak out. It's actually a good thing and you have got time to stop the machine, turn it off, reassess, um, hide the broken needle and get going again. Okay, so... That's on all good. Now I'm, just, I'm going to have to turn this a little bit, girls, so that I can sew. And I just want to piece these bits together. So straight stitch plate, 97D. Oh, we'll just whiz down here and pop this on. Now I've got the securing stitch set that we talked about yesterday at the start. Just turn this back this way because I really need you to see it. I'm going to try. So when we go into our settings, one of the first things that comes up is our little securing stitch under when we're sewing. So off, on, so I've got that on at the start. What if we got our set? Oh, we've still got our foot set from yesterday to actually do a securing knot no, securing, I'm going to do a little star securing knot and cut and lift my foot. So I'll leave that all on because that would be quite handy. So lower our foot. The other, the other nice thing with all of your machines is the, the control you've got with your foot. If you just tap the front of your foot, or should I say the top with your toes, it will lower the foot, but it won't start sewing. So you can always just come back, just tap again so you're happy you've got it really lined up nicely. And whatever stitch you're doing, that little dot there is where you're going to start sewing. So obviously we're going to sew a straight line, but if you were doing a decorative stitch, then I would know where it was going to start from so I could move my fabric across accordingly to get the right spot to start. Okay. Oh, good morning. I haven't turned you on yet. Okay. No pins are being harmed in this exercise. Okay. Right, 
So I'm going to tap the back of my foot that we programmed yesterday. Oh, did I not, who said that? Did I not do it? Oh, I'm so sorry. I did not. Did you say yesterday? Yes, I did say yesterday to engage your dual feet and I was too busy talking to you. Thank you very much, Robin. If you tell it when it turns it off, um, some things Elizabeth are programmed in like settings for finishing stitch, but other things like if you change stitches and tensions and everything are not saved when you turn the machine off. Good morning, Gidget. Um, so thank you, Robin. I hadn't turned it on, but it sewed pretty well without it, didn't it? Where's the other one gone? I didn't. No, here it is. So I'll just pop this one down the other side. And remember what I said too, that your um, your number one foot will do this as well. You can use your number one. You've got gauges here for your stitches on your foot plate. It, it's entirely up to you what you want to run with. And particularly, I didn't quite go back far enough. Particularly if you don't really care what your seam allowance is. Um, if you want a wider one, if you're doing uh, making clothes and things, your number one, number one C, your number one, and your number one D will all do the same trick. Okay, so I'll tap again, and it will finish off for me. Right now, I've actually got it set with needle down at the moment, so I'm going to tap it so it now stays up and use my needle up button and then it's disengaged and I can use my manual cutter if I want to. So you've just got heaps and heaps of different options on how you finish off cutting. It's going to be up to you. Whatever you like to do. If you're chain sewing, you'd be using your hover foot and popping the next one underneath ready to go. So that's ready for me now to pop something on the back of because that's what I was going to do with that one and create another little project in here. So I'll show you this one that I've done so far. I've had a little bit of a play with different feet. So this is, this is actually what I want to do with you is just play with letters and show you the sideways motion feet, a little triple stitch and top stitch, all right, with this one. So we'll head over to the, um, head over here, we'll pop the ironing board back over here. We'll take a slug of the coffee. And we'll just give this a quick press. Now I'm going to top stitch on the orange, these are new little liberties. A little bit of a, a little bit of soft sell there. These are new liberties. Um, oh, pressure seam first, Lisa Chandler. We'll press these. Then I want my seam to go towards the liberty because that's the orange, because that's what I'm going to top stitch on. finally learnt this morning not to overfill the mini irons. I'm still, I've still been bringing in the big jug for my big iron and I've sort of had to get used to <laughs> these little ones. But the secret to that is use the jug that comes with it and then you don't overfill them. All right, on the back of this for this morning, I'm just going to pop on some iron on tear away. This is the this is what we've been using a lot of for um, the girls that are doing the Be Mindful quilt, which is the big quilt on the wall behind me. Um, because we are taking the last instalment um, of members at the moment to uh, run that with fabric. We will be doing it later in the year as an online course, but we're running the club again. Starting at the start, first week of February, also known as when I get back from five weeks 
on location. I'm going to call it that because it's supposed to be a holiday that we were supposed to have uh, in November. Actually, originally after the Australian Online Textile Exhibition, then in November, and then we changed it because of Steve, and then in December, because we changed it because of Rob. Honestly, I'm treating four days like a six-week cruise, and I will have that much stuff packed to take with me. What pattern am I using? I'm not, Karen, I'm making it up, but I will have a pattern for it. Um, it's just... It's just a makeup. Sorry. I can tell you what the measurements are if you like on Tuesday. I'll let you know. I'll let you know what I'm doing. But we this was just to kind of get me in the mood with working with hot pink and orange because um, this is another one I'll show you. Because it's kind of it's kind of it's a little bit out of my comfort zone. But I need to get into using orange and pink again because of a fabric range. So if, if I want to do a fabric range and I'm not in that comfort zone with those particular colours. Uh, also a quilt. I put a little picture up on Instagram this morning. Right back here. Good morning, Debbie. Uh, all right. Let's um, have a look here. Now, I want to show you just something, just a little bit wild and wonderful. I'm going to take off the 97D, start of saying the next one, and I'm going to put on, let's just move that over there. We are putting on this one. This is a 40C. This one comes with... A 790 and as I said this is me purely showing off this machine but um, when we come to do this as a project and a little demo I will do it with something different if you can do any decorative stitches down the middle I'm going to take that off before I put on my normal plate again you could you could do this with anything absolutely anything you know um, and we can talk about different things but I just used this as an opportunity so this is my normal plate back on. I need my weeds, my wide slot. Um, actually, I should show you the back of this. Sorry, I'm dithering. Have a look at that. Absolutely nothing. It is just flat, flat and wide. So, Benita decided that it wasn't enough just for a machine to go backwards and forwards. They decided that the machine needed to go left and right as well. I'm going to turn this around a little bit more so you can see my screen. Um, I probably will have an epic fail going in a straight line while I've got this sitting on an angle, but um, I did manage to do that yesterday. So once I've got on this, this foot, if you've got one of these machines, you will need to choose your number 40 C foot. The machine will not do anything or go anywhere or do anything really kind of without it on. It, it's really important to have this one on. When I go into my decorative stitches, there's a 200 file, a 500 file, an 800 file, a 1000 file, and a 15, and a 16, and a 12. All of these have little crisscrosses on them. And what that means is they are sideward stitches that will go sideways. So, this is the one I told Anne I found yesterday. This one has words. Uh, it has Australia. It has Golden Gate, New Zealand, London, Swiss with a cow, and a few different things. Um, that was a little bit of a revelation that I found that. So... In these, now I found one. Um, so all of these stitches, they, the, the machine goes sideways, and as I said, it will only let you work them if this foot is on and the machine knows. I want to choose this one. It's not one of the most amazing decorative stitches, but there's a reason I want to show you this one, because I can 
um, do something quite cute. So if we're all set to go, look how big these are. This is 12, 12 mils wide and 21 long. So that entire bit there is actually two centimeters long. And oh, I'll do this first. Okay, off we go. So see it's going sideways. How freaky is that? And on the screen while it's going, you can still see the dot of where it actually is. Now I'm just gonna stop and show you. I might just do a bit more and stop with my needle down. No, come on, needle down. Thank you. I want you to remember to go in and have a look on your machine, whichever model you've got. Does anyone actually go into the eye for info button? Because you need to. There's a whole heap of stuff going in here. This is where you can mirror image your design. So I can mirror image it back and forth. This is where I can change if it's upside down or sideways. I can turn it all the way around and do lots of different things with it. So you, I've just flipped it the other way, literally. So now it's going to sew out the other way. So you can create little mirror images of bows and flowers and lots of different things. So please have a look at your machine. Also, you can come in and tell it how many times you want it to repeat the design. So if you want six of them stitched out and then you want it to stop, that's in here. If you're not happy with the way it is stitching out, I don't have any thread. Why do I not have thread? Give me a minute. I've obviously stitched away and because I'm sitting on an angle, I cannot see there's anything, nothing happening behind. Well, that's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? But because of the big foot, and I haven't been very far. Did you see that little sneaky thing I did before I actually chopped the thread back? Yeah, bad girl, bad girl. Okay, let's just do all this again. Cut my thread. We'll go back to the start anyway, that's fine. Just pull that out. It's going to be really fun, isn't it? If I've actually managed to get thread in there, we're going to be doing repeating the, uh, actually repeating the whole maintenance thing from yesterday. Um, this little button here, can you see it's come up on the screen? If you're stitching out on a really thick fabric and with, particularly with a satin stitch, if you're not happy with the density of the stitches, you can come in here and play and you can squish it up, you can angle it a little bit so it works better. It's almost like a mini machine embroidery. So it's very, very clever. Um, who said that? I've seen them before. What are you both all talking about? Oh, the ironing board? Yes, Bunnings. Bunnings, Bunnings. Um, so please come in to this info button, get your manual out and have a look. If you, because of the sideward motion on a 790, I'm not kidding you, you can change the direction that it sews out. <sighs> That's for another day. But lots of other stuff going in here, so please do. This button here, in this instance, the little zigzaggy one, if your cotton does break, ha ha, or you have a little bit of a faux pas further back, you can step back 200 stitches on your screen so that you can go, you can work your way back through the pattern and start sewing in exactly the right spot to pick up where you left off. Let's just try that again, folks. It goes sideways, and if I turn it, you can just see the start of the design. I'm going to pull this up and show you because I know a lot of you don't have one of these. We need a separate day for 790, but just to show you, it started stitching it out. So what I have stitched out there 
is I'm down to here on the screen. So it is a huge design. The other thing too, if you've got one, you need to get in here and have a play. And I, I mean that most sincerely because... Um, it, watch this. I can enlarge the screen. So now I can see the design big on here. I don't know if this exists on the 770 plus or not. That is why I'm... Um, faltering in my voice because I'm trying to think if it does or not but if you can see where I'm going to clear where I am I'm going to go to a different one now let's go to this one so here is my design the curly whirly one and it starts up here so if I wanted to and it finishes here I can push this button and I am now editing the stitch so there's a little grid sitting behind it and no I don't want that one go back where's my stitch it starts here oh so I'm going so I'm up to here I can literally draw in another loop and now I have added another swirl into my design I kid you not draw it down a little bit more and I can come up here and I can add in another swirl up there and now my design looks like that so you can edit your stitches so please if you have a flash machine a 720 has heaps of cool stuff on it as well please go in and have a look and start you know because I know what happens with me I go in here and I go Ooh, scary stuff I'm not going in there no no there's weird little icons and things in grey I don't want to know about it please go in and have a play you'll be amazed what you can actually do I'm on the play now. Um, with your machine no matter which one you've got go in and, and get in there now also oh no, I'm going to come out we could do that later let's get sidetracked all right so that is a sideways motion foot that comes with your 790 please please go in and have a play and look at all the stitches and put it on and when you do remember you need to tell the machine you've got that foot on or it will block you from using those screens because you've got to have that one on so that is what i did down the center here um, and you did see me put the stabilizer on the back if i was doing really really heavy decorative work i would even pop this in a small hand embroidery hoop because i want to keep that tension really nice nice and flat okay now let's go back over to this one which is looking very sad but we're going to keep running with this one the next thing that i wanted to talk about was just doing some little decorative um, stitches and some top stitch so if i'm going to do that i've got a few options of feet that i can use to do it and the one the one that I did want to talk about again is um, my uh, little 23 here, which is my favourite, favourite applique foot on my 720. This is a lovely little foot to use. If I'm going to do a little bit of top stitching or something and I need to see where I'm going, this is the foot that I love. But if I'm going to use this to do something like this little tulip flower design down here the machine is going to be much happier if it knows that I'm um, actually just doing a little stitch so I'm going to take this plate off this keeps getting me in trouble doesn't it I'm just going to pull my bobbin out for a minute because I've got thread everywhere and I'm going to pop this one on with the 5.5 mil slit and I'm going to tell the machine that this is the one that I've got on because I love this foot and I want to use it on this machine. Now I'm going to go up to my feet and I'm going to tell it that I've got my 23 on. Then I'm going to put it on. So this one has no sensor. All right, so even more important that you tell the machine it's on because it can't sense that there's a sensor foot on. So I'm going to pop that on. That goes to the back. Um, interesting, that number 40C, it is a C and not a D. Because it needs to go sideways, you can't have, you can't engage your dual feed. Of course, 
because it's going sideways and left and right. So it only comes as a 40C. And I would assume if there is a fee for these machines that you can only get in a um, 40, you can only get in a C, it's because they don't work with your fee. That'll be why. Benina would do one, I'm sure, confident if they could. Now, when I go into my decorative stitches now, um, I'm going to choose this one, which is my little tulips. The machine will only let me go to 5.5 because it knows I've got that plate on. So I'm going to end up with this really cute little design and it's only going to be 5.5 white. So it's looking, because I've done that and I'm on the big machine, it, the, the, the design is still scaled lengthways, if you like, or the, the tulips, the fatness of the tulips, are still set up for what you could have done if I was running a normal plate. So this is the width of the design for a 9mm, but the height for a 5.5. So I'm going to use my little dial on the side and I'm just going to reduce that down um, so that it looks a little bit, just a little bit cuter and my tulips are a little bit more squished together. You can use your dial on the side or you can come in here and tap your screen and you can change it here by tapping or the scale that's on here. Always to keep with you, when you're doing this messing around, keep with you a metric ruler because these measurements are millimetres. So we all, you know, think imperial all the time. But if that's 10 mil, I can literally, you know, hold my ruler up and go, okay, that's a centimetre long. So I'm going to get a centimetre um, for each of my little tulips as they go along. And they're going to be cute and little and 5.5, 5.5 wide. So I'm going to pop. That's all. Oh, and remember, they're going to shine yellow, remember, because we're not on the default setting. I'll shut that down. Now, if I go to lay this up here now, and I'm going to sew them just onto the pink here, and I will probably, excuse my head for a minute, just to make my life easy, I'm going to, where do we start? Oh, okay. We're going to change this. When If I sewed now, because I'd have to sew over here on this side to actually, you know, get it to sit so the tulips are facing up the right way but I want to sew down this side. So I'm going to go into info, I'm going to flip it, I'm going to push mirror image, and now it's sitting the other way, which is what we want. So my tulips sit upwards, not downwards. So I'm going to put my foot down. Am I happy where I am? No, I am not, because I can see on the screen that my dot is at the base of my tulips. So I'm going to move Sorry again, girls. Just move across, just so I can have a look. I'll pop my needle down. Let's see where we go. Yeah, we're good. So, it's just going to stitch. I've lined up, what I've done, I've lined up that little, there's a little bar of plastic that comes down towards the front. So I've just lined that up as best I can without getting my head in your way. Oh, it's going to be wonky. I need one up and over my shoulder, don't I? Alright, let's have a look. Okay, they're quite cute. You can't quite see them, but I might just change. We'll just do another one, just so you can see a different one. Again, because the um, it's set lengthwise for the 9mm machine scale, I am going to just, just drop it down a little bit. There we go. If Lisa used her stylus, she would not hit the wrong buttons. Now, if I go in here and I flip, it doesn't really make any difference because it's a symmetrical design. But again, I could come in, I could tell it how many repeats I wanted, I could stitch backwards. There's lots and lots of things in there. You need to play in that info section. 
particularly if you've had your machine for quite a while, you know, and you're pretty confident with everything else going on, then you need to. ignore that other bit so there you go just a little just a little stitch out so I've done some of my little tulips and these but I have done them on the 9mm machine with the 5.5 plate and the 23 foot so I just I just wanted to show you that and I think it's really good if you particularly if you have um, a, a 475 or a 5.5mm machine and a big machine keep this in mind because it just means a lot of the feet that you've actually purchased for your 5.5 machine and then you'll be able to use them optimally on your big machine as well you can buy 34 c's and other ones um, but if you already own one of these this might be a more versatile investment for you to get this one rather than um, a heap more feet i'm going to take that off i'm going to take this off and i'm going to pop my number 20d on for a moment with my normal plate let's not get them mixed up the normal plate does not have a colour square on it but um, don't we just love how easy it is to get the feet and the plates on and off alright there are uh, there are um, great um, top stitch hemming top stitch narrow seam feet uh, number fives they're all wonderful you can use one of those but also you will find that it's really easy to mess around with just your needle position if you want to get a really nice fine top stitch so I just wanted to mention that too certainly there is a specialized reason for owning a hemming a number 10 or a number 5 have a look at those in your books but if you're just doing something quick like this just pop on a 20d engage your dual feed sorry Robin nearly did it again because I'm talking um, we're going to tell the machine everything that we've changed or it is about to have a hissy fit with me and not let me do anything and that is really really good it's, it, it's so good because it would have just things just would have gone completely pear shaped then so I'm going to lower my foot just with the tap at the on my toes um, on my pedal and then I'm going to play around with my yeah 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 play around with my um, stitch position back to number one so I can go right out absolutely right out to the absolute five mil out on the side here and that gives me a super duper slim um, top stitch so if you don't want to worry you don't stress too much about finding the right foot um, besides you know even a 20c will do it so I can just have a little play here I might move it across a bit now this foot is right absolutely right on the edge I'm going to go down put my needle in wow that is super close in fact it's so close you not, might not be able to see it I might bring my needle up I'll go back to four so I'm on four mil across we'll go down again perfect okay also remember with you can just use your dial or your screen any time to change your stitch length the machine's going to give you just do your default setting all the time so we'll just zoom down here and I'll show you how close you can get just with your 20 foot same with the 720 do exactly the same pop on your number 20 just pop on your number 20 and you'll be able to move your needle position across and find an edge here or here for you that's going to work to give you a really nice top stitch so I've now got you see, right here it is just probably two mil in from the edge uh, just with my 20 all right so that is me being lazy but that does work now if I was doing jeans or something um, really thick I would switch to my jean foot so your jean foot and as I apologize before I don't have my jean foot for my 720. Um, Lisa's been a little bit naughty lately, speaking of her in a third party sense, with her feet. 
Um, there's been a lot of rush sewing going on. I remember when I used my eight last. <clears throat> but uh, I, it'll be on the banana shelf. Now, I'm switching back. I'm not saying you change your feet, change your plates all the time, but this is just me showing you different things or one after the other. Switch back to your jeans, uh, sorry, to your straight stitch. If you're going to do um, heavyweight fabrics, maybe not needed as much because they're thicker. And remember, we talked yesterday about foot pressure. If you're on thicker fabric, it's going to hold on thicker because you know because you're pressing down onto thicker fabric, you're going to get a better grip. And we talked about if you go really thick, you might actually have to uh, loosen off your foot pressure. But if you're going to do thin stuff, this is what, be going between thick and thin, this is what I reckon. Pop on your straight stitch. Tell the machine that you've got if you've got one of these, tell the machine you've got your eight on, or pop your eight on. If you, if you're on a 720, all I want you to do every time is just double check everything and remember, look for the yellow. Just look for the yellow. This is a good yellow. This is a bad yellow. So you will still have yellow show up, and it's a bad yellow because I don't have my needle in the position that needs to be, which is the middle. So when you do go to start, well, as I do on my seven. 20, I look for yellow, I look that for non-default non settings just to make sure I'm in the right spot. So with my 8D on now and the dual feed, it is really, really nice with the straight stitch plate for doing triple stitch, which is what I've done on here. So I'll just show you, particularly if you want a also a, a longer triple stitch. So, sorry about my head again, but I'm going to do the same thing again. I might go wider this time, just because it's a bit easier for me to see. And I'm lining up the edge of my foot um, with the seam here, just so I can see it. Otherwise, I'd be lining it up on this internal edge, so I get a really tight, narrow top stitch like I did here. And remember I told you yesterday, some of the new machines, have a look, they have a triple stitch feature. Um, so they can take selected stitches and stitch them out triple for you, not just like number six that comes with your machine. So now I have just created, I want to say the perfect environment. <laughs> I feel like I'm gardening. I just, I feel like I've created the perfect setup to get a beautiful top triple stitch because I've got the jeans foot on that's giving me the super narrow um, hole. So, you know, it's not pulling fabric down. I've got my straight stitch plate on. I've got dual feet on. And it just runs beautifully. The same will happen um, with a number eight with or without a straight stitch on your 720. It is a lovely straight stitch. Treble stitch, sorry. If you do it in variegated, oh my goodness. So there you go. So that, it, it's just, I think um, it's all about just optimal things. It's going to work without, but then if you were doing this on jeans or denim, you're going to want this set up so that it just flows beautifully through the machine. Now, the other thing that I had a play with was the alphabet. So I did here and I did this. I didn't get too carried away. I just did the word makeup and I did one repeat of one of the flowers. So, because we have to embrace, <laughs> we have to embrace the alphabet. I think it's a little bit like when we used to do buttonholes with our first machines that we ever had or those ones that we used at high school. You had to mark it all out with chalk and you're using the zigzag and the what. Ah, it, it's that feeling. It is that feeling. And I'm not going to lie, it, you do have to read the manual. You do. It's because it is an amazing, complex system um, that's going to allow you to do so many different things. And depending on the machine you've got, mirror imaging, programming, changing stitches, you know, 
um, I'm, I'm guilty of never ever really making an effort with it on my 720 and I'm going to go back and do that because I've only played on here um, to any extent but if we tell the machine now that we have been very good and we've gone back and popped on um, my 20D gauge of fade Lisa um, and also there's the other yellow one I've got my 9 back on he's happy now okay let's go into alphabet do you realize what the problem with me is with this stylist is that I'm a lefty and the storage is over on the right so I'm a little bit naughty with not popping it back where it belongs depending on your machine you will have different amounts of alphabets I think some of the fives and the 770 may have more than the 790 um, that's not trying to create an inferiority complex for anyone in their machine it's just you know as new models come out new things happen they add things in um, if you've got a 770 and you're thinking about doing the upgrade uh, which you can do it yourself at home you just buy it and you can do it yourself and Judy Vermeulen if you're here yes it is Mac compatible it's all good um, then you can just you know have a little bit of a play because there are so many different things in here right if I choose chose the fancy schmancy one it will not let me stitch them out you know why because it uses the no 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 it uses the um sideways foot let's go in here I'm just going to do the simple one so you can see it so I'm going to do hello just you know but I'm going to go down and grab small. I've got a capital H, E L L. Hello. What have we got down further? Nothing that way. What else do we want to put in? Do we get an exclamation? Oh, I've got an exclamation mark. Let's do two. Oh, did you see what I did? See how it's just changing them all over? Okay, my bad. Let's go back. Let's just clear all of that. Um, Lisa's done her first faux pas for the day. Oh, I've got to go to info. No, i got to go. Info. Give me a minute. I can do it. I can do it. Oh, look at that. You can actually change. Hang on. I'm going to get out because, did you see what I actually did? Go back here. Hopefully that's cleared it and I don't. All right, what we need to do to get through the alphabet, see I just left it on continuous so it's getting H, 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 H. We're gonna push the plus button down the bottom here. So we are actually programming in a word that is what I always forget to do, and that's what I did live on Facebook today. Okay, now we will go through H, L, L, O, with <laughs> definitely now an exclamation mark, maybe with a question mark as well now. All right, so I've popped all those in. Depending on the machine that you have, you can scroll up and down through the different letters in the word and I'm not kidding you you can edit them individually oh. so check what your machine is able to do watch this I can make my H fatter or narrower oh. and then I can go to my E and I can mess with it I, I can even change what it looks like it's insane I'm gonna leave those I'm not gonna do that shall I yeah let's leave it like that so you can you can mess with them. The most important thing though, I found out yesterday, and you can't see under this flower there's an unpicked bit, is that if you go through and edit your letters as you go, it's actually changing your start position. This is awfully, you know, obviously wonderful if you're having to step back and start halfway through a word, but not if you're just starting the word. So you need to make sure that you have taken yourself back to the top and you've clicked on the first letter. Um, it's not going to work that way. I need to reverse it. Can I reverse it? Oh, it's going to reverse individual. What happens if I go that way? I don't know. 
I will find it. There is just so many things in here. All of these little commands do amazing, wonderful things. It's not probably for late night reading. It's, um, thank you, Marie. Yes, I know. Um, it's not for late night reading. It's for reading while sitting in front of your machine so that you do it as you are literally stitching it out um, as you're playing with it and that way it's going to sink into your brain a lot better. I'm going to run on this side. Now I've got, is that Lionel Richie in my head with hello? Goodness, down there. Okay, let's go. So depending on your machine, 5.5 mil means you can get 5.5 mil high letters. Uh, 9 mil means you'll get 9 mil high. Now I forgot to push my pattern end button over here, so I'm just watching there. Okay, we're all good. There you go. On. Please, please play. Please play. And um, the other thing too, of course, is uh, you don't have to be doing sequences of um, you don't have to be doing sequences of letters. You can do sequences of stitches if you wish. So if I where was I yesterday? I was in flowers. Was I in here with the tulips? I think I was. This little guy here. This is the one that I did yesterday. And um, he's just a little flower. So he stitched out like that. And I went in to the info button and I told the machine I only wanted one. So when I push that, it's one. If I wanted two, you just keep pushing. So I might do two today. And then I decided, oh, let's see, well, when you flip it, it's the same, but I could actually reverse it so they were sitting up instead of down with this button. So go into info and see what your machine will do. Some of you will do this, some of it won't, but please, please have a go. So now I can, I'll just stitch this down this side. I'll completely trash this one, why can I? You'll see the commercially viable one <laughs> on Tuesday. Here we going. Nearly there. There we are. So that's just to stitch the two. Like that. So that's with my normal plate on and I have used my 20D. There will be other ones that you can use. And of course, there is absolutely no reason why you can't use your two, your 1D um, or your 1C. This, the difference is you've got this lovely big opening at the front so you can see where you're going. Um, the 1D has a little bit more of an indent cut out in here because it is much more of a multi-purpose foot. So this is in here for getting over seams and things as well. Um, but your 20D is going to be your best, you know, it just means you can see where you're going. What's interesting is, look at this. This is very interesting. See the base of these? This is a big chunky one. That's the 20D and it's got this wedge going in, but the 23 which is kind of this foot's function on a smaller scale with a clear base instead of the opening has the same shape wedge. So there's going to be some whiz bang technical reason for that. They've all got different bases and it's uh, worth having a look. So there's my 20, see? So I've got the same wedge as the 20D and the 23. Very, very interesting. All right. So I am hoping that that just gives you a little bit more to play with and gives you 
a little bit more confidence to try out different things in your machine. You've certainly got me going. I am absolutely on it and trying out lots of different stuff um, at the moment on all of them. Um, and you would think, ah, oh, thanks, Jude. I would think, so Judy thinks Spotlight's got these as well. I reckon this was a Spotlight purchase. Um, because I think Em picked it up for me and I don't remember Em ever shopping in Bunnings for me but she certainly shops in Spotlight for me. Our Bunnings have got... Bunnings have got that other one that I use. Is it in here? No, no, it's not. But you know, um, Bunnings and Ikea have got the ones that are about that wide and they're about that long. They are also fantastic. This is brilliant. This is really nice and sturdy. And the reason Em and I love this as well is we can get our handbags, Judy, over this one to slide them in. Um, and I ordered for, for us to... That's the Royal Us, you and me. and um, Just those lovely little rounded, firm cushion pillow things so that we can put those up into our handbags to iron out the bases and stuff as well. So hopefully they'll come in soon. No, Emery, there are not enough hours in the day. Um, I've got to get, I've got a whole quilt top to piece and quilt before Tuesday. Uh, yeah, so that'll be happening really early in the day before it gets too hot. Um, I think the jam's finished. And zucchini relish, and uh, I bought a dehydrator. It's, it's, it's foodie year. I, I shall explain on a quilter's life. It's uh, foodie year. So I've also got to do, um, if you are in a quilter's life, demo for the upcoming blocks uh, at the front door. There are 180 envelopes being picked up in the morning by Australia Post at 6am by Andrew uh, going out. And so I'm going to start doing the uh, demo for reverse applique for a quilter's life. I've done one on the Chandler's Cottage applique sampler closed group page. That's there. And then I'll also come through and do a sort of more extensive one in a quilter's life um, over the next couple of days and get that up for you. So that's all happening today. Anyway, please, please play with your machines. And um, if you've got any questions again, please send them through to me. You will notice changes on the website coming up. Uh, we we're going to take that little Benina icon off the front and we're moving Benina into the Habby section. That's going to happen over the next week. We, we really don't know what they're going to do with us because at the moment it's all running swimmingly well. But I don't have a shop front. So as I said, you and I know that. We'll just, we'll just keep going for now. But if you've seen any of the feet today or anything that you would like, there's not much up there at the moment in Benita because we had our big sale at Christmas, please just email me and I will just correspond back and forth with you, get a price for you, and if you'd like one, um, anything, I can order it in for you. All right, so um, enjoy the rest of your Sunday and I look forward to catching you um, on a good slap and or, well definitely, 2 o'clock with M on Tuesday afternoon, all right? Have a lovely day. Um, Marie, time um, for a second Baileys, I think, maybe. <laughs> yes, Melissa, a tailor's ham. That is what they are called. Um, oh, if you tell the machine you have a clear shorter foot with the wedge, will it tell you what the optimal stitches are? Sorry, I missed this, Elizabeth. Uh, yes, it... No, it goes the other way around. Can you all see what Elizabeth's written? If you tell the machine you have a short, of, a clear shorter foot with the wedge, will it tell you what the optimal stitches are for that foot? It won't tell you that on the machine, Elizabeth, but certainly if you go to your accessory book, uh, it will tell you when you click on and go to the YouTube, the Benina YouTubes, and it will also, it tells you that extensively, mine's in the other room, if you own a Benina Big Book of Feet. That is that is the beauty of the Big Book of Feet. It does it in reverse for you. So it goes through each foot and which stitches are best to use with it. So the machine um, 
uh, you tell it what stitch you want to do and it will tell it the best feet to do it with but it's the reverse in the book so that's um that's probably the best that's probably the best option <laughs> only 30 mils you're all good all right girls love you lots and i shall see you on tuesday if not before all right bye